10 million Australians will receive their tax bonus as early as next week after the government's income tax package passed Parliament. So just how much can you expect in your return? The low and middle income tax offset will deliver up to $250 for people earning up to $37,000 per year. Workers earning up to $48,000 will get a tax bonus of up to $1,080 a year. Most taxpayers are in this next tax bracket, earning up to $90,000 a year, and they will receive the full $1,080. It then tapers off for workers getting paid more than $90,000 a year. Treasurer Josh Frydenberg joins me now from Canberra. Morning to you. Good morning, Nat. In theory, people will be getting this cut from as early as next week. Will it be enough to help stimulate our economy? Certainly going to be a very positive boost for the economy and it's been welcomed by the Reserve Bank Governor who said it will lift household incomes and therefore overall economic activity. But it's part of a broader plan, Nat, that we set out in this year's budget on April the 2nd, which is the tax cuts but also $100 billion in infrastructure spending, 80,000 new apprenticeships, new trade deals which are opening up opportunities for our exporters into the booming markets in our region as well as a deregulation agenda and backing of small business with the extension of the instant asset write-off, which has already been used by more than 300,000 companies. So we're doing the right thing by business, we're doing the right thing by income earners, and this is a victory for the Australian economy. Do you think you paid uh, too much of a price for it um, in that um, securing Jackie Lambie's vote meant paying off that huge Tasmanian debt? Well, we've had very constructive negotiations with the crossbenchers and what we've said all along is we're prepared to sit down and talk about the issues that are important to them and are important to us. But we persuaded Jackie Lambie and the other crossbenchers of the merits of this tax package because there's not only short-term relief, but we're also going to see long-term structural reform where 94% of Australian taxpayers will pay a marginal tax rate of no more than 30 cents in the dollar. This is a much simpler, stronger, better tax system and it has to be said we didn't get the support of the Labor Party. They're still the party of higher taxes. They opposed us during the election. The Australian people had their say and now we got the legislation through the Parliament with the support of the crossbenchers. Yes but do you feel a bit ripped off this morning because you did this deal with the crossbenchers and then Labor caved anyway? I couldn't be happier this morning. Labor's been a shambles all along. Their position has changed uh, by the day, uh, and the Australian people know that they took to the last election just six weeks ago uh, $387 billion of higher taxes on retirees, on homeowners, on family businesses, and the Australian people rejected that. We, on the other hand, have, consistent with our values of encouraging aspiration and reward for effort, put in place a major tax reform package of $158 billion. That's now gone through the parliament, it's now law and Australians will get the benefits from as early as next week. Is this going to be enough? Some, some economists are now saying um, that although this is helpful, we may need more. Has the government got more money to give if the economy doesn't recover? Well, we agree with the Reserve Bank Governor that monetary policy, that is the loosening of interest rates, isn't the only lever in the economy. There's also fiscal policy. But our plan is pretty comprehensive now. It was set out in the budget. It's infrastructure, it's apprenticeships and it's these tax cuts. And these tax cuts will put $8 billion a year into the hands of Australians, money that belongs in their hands, not in the government's hands. So let's see how it all plays out. But we're very conscious of the challenges the challenges that the economy faces, whether it's the tensions between China and the United States and what that is doing to the global economic outlook, or the softening in the housing market, or the impact of drought and flood. We're very conscious of all those challenges, but we have the plan to get us through. And let's not forget that the Australian economy is in its 28th consecutive year of economic growth, a record that hasn't been beaten by any other developed nation. Let's hope it stays that way. Josh Frydenberg, thanks for your time this morning. Always good to be with you now.